included in this occasion. I think uh, all of you who are members of the Sikh community should be very proud of your representation at the United Nations. I just want to say that. Uh, you have wonderful representatives. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is that the United Nations is a very complicated system. And it takes quite a bit to sort of maneuver and figure out how to enter it in a constructive way. And I think they've been doing a superb job. Uh, I do want to say that this report is an excellent tool for that type of uh, involvement. In other words, this, any time you come in with a very solid factual base and you've collected data in, the, in a systematic way about different types of violations, it puts you in a stronger position. So I think this can be used uh, in many, many venues. Uh, I, I'm very appreciative of some of the previous comments, so I'm going to refer to some of them. Uh, one is, I think that, that whenever we're talking about different forms of human rights violations, that we stand in solidarity with each other. That so no matter what community you're from, no matter what aspect of your, who you are is being discriminated against, if you're being discriminated against by the way you appear, um, if you're being discriminated against by virtue of being a female, by the color of your skin, whatever it is, I think that we all need to be in solidarity with each other. Um, so it's my one little thing about the report because there's a little bit of it that gives a little bit of a slightly different impression. But but the issue of discrimination is, is huge for all of us as human beings. Because anytime any of us are sorted out from others as being a target by virtue of something that is just who we are then we're not being treated by, on the basis of our behavior, right? I mean, it's not that we've done something heinous or horrible to somebody. We're being targeted just because of some aspect of who we are, okay? That's that's terrible, right? I mean, just across the board terrible. Don't you agree? Don't you agree? Because cause to be experience violence, to experience um, criminalization of just being who you are, is, is, I think, one of the worst things that human beings can do against other human beings. You know, if, we're, if I'm just looking at somebody or somebody's looking at me and they're saying, look, this is how you look, and therefore I'm going to say that you can fly a plane or you're going to end up in prison or you're not allowed to participate in some kind of forum, uh, then then that's a horrible thing, right? So I think, I think that this is kind of key to the report, and I think this issue of discrimination is, is maybe the most important thing to use um, in terms of a, a solidarity aspect. And that's why I really appreciate the racial profiling report that you put together. Uh, I think that, that then we see how widespread it is. I mean, and this is in the U.S., and this is, in the U.S., even though I'm a U.S. citizen and I every bit as angry as the next U.S. citizen about the things that we do here, it's certainly not the only place that things are happening of this order, where people are being sorted out just by virtue of who they are as targets for hate crimes, as targets for discrimination. So I think um, across the board, this idea of solidarity is, I think, the main thing I'd like to underscore and promote, and to use this report that way, I think would be the most, most beneficial. So I want to that. Um, I'm so glad we have the ASOU. I've always been what has now become known as a card-carrying member. I'm a proud card-carrying member of, uh, of the ASOU. <laughs> because there was a point where you were in trouble if you were a card-carrying member. So that's another form of solidarity um, on my part. I'm <laughs> solidarity with the ASOU. And um, so now I just want to explain just a little bit about the United Nations and what the United Sikhs are doing in, within the context of the United Nations. Now, the United Nations is a very cumbersome um, institution. And the reason it is, is that basically the people that run the United Nations are under the control of 192 countries, plus under the control of the five permanent members of the Security Council. Okay, so. <laughs> So if you're thinking, if you have a protest, and we usually have these one or two protests across the street, aimed at the United Nations, about something that's not good. I mean, not to say that the protests aren't about a worthy cause, 
they have absolutely no effect. I mean, I'm just trying to speak reality here. No effect. Because that's not going to change Don Ki Moon's behavior. It's not going to change the behavior of different agencies within the United Nations, the, the protests. But what can change is understanding different ways that the UN actually does work. And one of the most valuable things to understand is how um, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights works and how the Human Rights Council works and how you can submit reports and make sure that in that sense, in the sense of rule of law, social justice, these kinds of basic principles, you can actually make sure that you're literally in that sense uh, seeking common cause vis-a-vis uh, -vis these different violations of human rights. And definitely discrimination of the type that you, I think, done a beautiful job of documenting. It's a basis for submitting reports. It's a basis for making sure that people throughout the system know what's happening. So I think that way, uh, again, I think this is a very valuable contribution. So again, I'm very happy to be here. And I, again, I want to commend the report.